Thank you for the introduction and thank you for the invitation. So um, our team is um, uh, working on, uh, is focusing on the role of adipose tissue in the context of viral chronic infection. And uh, today I would like to share some uh, data about the potential contribution of adipose tissue to the low-grade systemic inflammation that is associated with uh, chronic HIV infection. So the pro-inflammatory potential of adipose tissue is more than well documented in the context of obesity. Uh, obesity is an excessive accumulation of adipose tissue that is associated with a profound remodeling of uh, adipose tissue uh, cellular composition, uh, which means infiltration of immune cells with pro-inflammatory profiles such as uh, CD8 T cells and uh, mostly pro-inflammatory macrophages. This is obviously associated with the secretion of pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokines, and very schematically, uh, obesity is a local inflammation developing in adipose tissue that will translate in systemic inflammation uh, and uh, uh, that will contribute to the development of comorbidities. So um, why considering adipose tissue in the context of chronic HIV infection? So in fact, adipose tissue is uh, an old partner of HIV infection. Uh, the high incidence of lipodystrophy that emerged with uh, the uh, introduction of the first generation of antiretroviral treatment clearly uh, define uh, the high toxicity of this drug on adipose tissue. Uh, we may believe that this is an old question, but in fact, this has been uh, reactivated. There is still concern about the toxicity of these drugs, as uh, uh, exemplified with the weight gain with recent molecules such as uh, dolitegravir that has been shown uh, recently. Um, on the, the aspect of the virus, there is obviously the impact of viral protein on adipose tissue metabolic function, and uh, our teams and others have demonstrated that adipose tissue is also a site of viral persistence, and uh, that the virus is targeting CD40 cells and in some cases macrophages. So um, this is a, a, sp a specific uh, uh, properties of adipose tissue where both the metabolic and immune compartment of adipose tissue are targeted uh, during a site infection. So what is interesting is uh, to consider the potential contribution of this adipose tissue dysfunction to the chronic inflammation associated with uh, controlled chronic HIV infection. And in fact, if we've got a lot of evidence about adipose tissue dysfunction related either to the virus or the treatment, we've got more limited data about the inflammation developing in adipose tissue. So we know that there is defect in adipogenesis, uh, there is fibrosis, hypoxia, uh, for the, the immune part, increase in CDT cell proportion, a uh, change in the macrophage population. There is also an uh, element about inhibition of Beijing. Uh, multiple uh, uh, factors has been defined uh, to uh, uh, define adipose tissue dysfunction. But for the inflammation, we've got no consensual data about that. There is all, uh, not so old, but there is uh, data about um, inflammation in uh, uh, HIV-infected patients, but this was performed in obese uh, cohort of patients, and there is also data about uh, uh, adipose tissue collected from uh, lipodystrophic patients. So in a much more uh, uh, common uh, use of uh, antiretroviral treatment, we don't know really what's happening. So at the end of the project, sorry, uh, was to um, go for the preliminary phase, just evaluate the impact of the virus and the treatment on the local inflammation developing on adipose tissue, and not necessarily considering the, uh, the, the consequence on the systemic inflammation. To do that, we use a non-human primate model, the Sinomorgus macaque, that allows us to uh, better control the uh, metabolic uh, history, the infectious history, the age, the sex, uh, all these parameters that are very uh, important and that will modify the uh, biology of adipose tissue. Uh, and we just went for a gene expression assay for standard markers associated in inflammation as commonly described in the context of obesity. So uh, just a short slide about the methods. We uh, performed the analysis on male adult synomalgus macaque. We collected uh, subcutaneous and visceral adipose tissue that exhibit different profile. And uh, we designed three groups of, of animals uh, the sieve uh, negative, the control group, and then uh, sieve uh, positive animals that were infected with the sieve MAC 251 strain by IV injection. 
and uh, uh, for the CIF plus art plus group, there was the same protocol of uh, uh, infection. And then at week four, 24 post infection, we uh, um, introduced uh, uh, tree therapy uh, combining FTC, TDF, and DTG. So uh, as you can see here, um, uh, we had a different uh, date of euthanasia. Uh, for the CIF plus group, the euthanasia was performed 12 months after infection. And for the CIF plus art plus, we uh, delayed a little bit so that we could uh, uh, have uh, time to introduce the antiretroviral treatment and to allow the effect of this treatment to uh, efficiently control the, the virus. So uh, as expected, uh, there was a difference in viral load between the CIF plus group and the CIF plus art plus group. Uh, the viral load was not detectable uh, in the in the CIF plus art plus group, whereas uh, we've got a, a, a low level of uh, viral load, but a presence uh, of the virus uh, in the blood for the CIF plus group. For the inflammatory profile, we really uh, use an approach that was very close to what is described in obesity. We uh, addressed inflammation of the adipose tissue by uh, gene expression of soluble markers but also of markers that could help us to define whether change of the adipose tissue cellular composition could be observed, and also markers on the, uh, the, 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 the state of the extracellular matrix. So um, first, we just went for the pro-inflammatory cytokine, and we went for adipokines produced by adipocyte, leptin and adiponectin, and also uh, more immune cytokine that were IL-6 and TNF. And um, as you can see, it was quite a surprising result. In these uh, uh, settings, we did not see any sign of inflammation in the CIF plus group compared to the CIF minus. However, when we were looking for the CIF plus art plus group, there was change in inflammatory profile, but uh, we've got some kind of uh, mixed uh, uh, profile. Concerning the adipokines, we had an increase of both leptin but also adiponectin in, this, uh, 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 in, this, uh, in both uh, SCAT uh, and VAT. And interestingly, the, the net ratio between adiponectin and leptin was in favor of adiponectin, suggesting that there is some anti-inflammatory process developing in adipose tissue in the context of CIF plus R plus uh, uh, treatment. Uh, for the cytokines, we've got no detectable, we did not observe any detectable change in IL-6, but as you can see, we've got massive heterogeneity uh, in each group, suggesting that IL-6 expression is probably uh, highly dependent of other factors that we were unable to control in this uh, context, and so maybe it's not the, the most robust marker to address adipose tissue inflammation. And for TNF, uh, we observed a higher expression of TNF uh, alpha in the visceral adipose tissue again, just in the C plus, R plus uh, animals. So a second um, a strategy to address uh, the uh, adipose tissue inflammation is the expression of the chemokines. So we went for, again, standard markers of uh, chemokine, standard markers of uh, uh, inflammation during obesity, uh, analyzing MCP1, CCL5, CX3, CL1, and CXCL10. Again, no difference between the CIF plus and the CIF minus group, but we observe alteration of the adipose tissue chemotactism that was not uh, observed for all the chemokine, but we observed no detectable difference in MCP1 and 6 CL10, but higher expression for CCL5 and CX3 uh, CL1. So uh, the uh, next uh, uh, f uh, exploration was to uh, study the expression of genes that were more uh, specific of some cell subset. So we use PPAR gamma and uh, CEBP alpha for uh, the adipocyte. Uh, we uh, tried CD45 for hematopoietic cells and then uh, use some marker that were more specifically expressed by some cells, such as uh, gamma interferon for the TNK cells or CD163 for macrophages. This is a very rough analysis, uh, but it still uh, gives us some details. And to reflect the activity of the extracellular matrix, we also use uh, collagen and uh, HIF1 uh, alpha. Again, no difference between the CIF plus and the CIF minus animals, but we observed a clear alteration of the cell composition uh, uh, in the CIF plus R plus group. This affected all uh, the, the components. We've got an increase of PIPA gamma and CABP alpha, increase in CD16 in CD163, and a train for gamma interferon in the SCAT that was significant in the VAT, and increase in collagen and uh, high IF1 uh, alpha uh, in the CIF plus R plus. So uh, I, I'm just going to uh, make a summary of these. 
uh, very uh, uh, simple layer. The, the first conclusion is that we had a limited impact of SIV infection per se on the inflammatory profile of adipose tissue. Uh, maybe uh, it's important to uh, emphasize that uh, we're in a model of mild infection, and it's a 12 months exposition to the virus, so maybe it's not sufficient to observe effect. Or maybe we're not uh, looking for the proper uh, markers for uh, inflammation. But um, uh, we choose three uh, exploratory uh, pathways, looking either at the cytokine secretion, either at the cell composition, or either at the, the extracellular matrix profile. But for none of these pathways, we observe the difference uh, in the CIF plus uh, animals. Uh, however, uh, the, there was a specific inflammatory signature in the CIF plus uh, R plus uh, animals. So we observe metabolic change that uh, mostly uh, uh, fit with what is described in cellular immunity or um, uh, with uh, hypertrophy and hyperplasia of adipocyte that is described in a CIF plus R plus context associated with fibrosis and hypoxia. So this marker um, um, nicely fit with what we know, uh, either by microscopy or by uh, cytometry on what happens during a uh, CIF plus R plus uh, context. Uh, regarding the immune change, it's slightly less consistent. We've got increase in TNF, but not much on IL-6. Uh, we've got no MCP1, but chemokine signaling. And uh, maybe I just uh, add a, uh, a little emphasis on this adiponectin signature that suggests that maybe there is some kind of compensatory mechanism in adipose tissue that is able to prevent uh, massive inflammation in adipose tissue in this context. I will not go uh, much on the cell composition because we were very uh, limited. Uh, CD163, gamma interferon just gave us a, a, a general picture, but it's not so easy to interpret it. We will need some more uh, data to really go further on these. So uh, what happened there is that in this model of art-treated mild SIV infection, we've got a predominant impact on the metabolic fraction of adipose tissue and modest local inflammatory response. Again, this is, in, this is obtained during a 24 months infection period, and maybe this is not enough, and uh, a longer time point will allow us to see a more, uh, 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 to see also the, 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 the immune uh, inflammatory response to develop. So uh, I would just like to make some comment on this. So, uh, these uh, data suggest that the, the toxicity of art may not be such the old story we may have believed it was. Uh, uh, although there is no more lipodystrophy, or at least less, uh, there's still some concern about the impact of art, art treatment on the biology of adipose tissue. Uh, we were quite uh, puzzled by this the connection between the metabolic and immune alteration. Uh, and uh, it's um, um, clearly not comparable to the context of obesity, and maybe uh, uh, we're uh, considering some compensatory mechanism that may exist. Uh, I will also uh, just uh, make uh, this uh, uh, comparison with the um, metabolically LC obesity profile that has been described. So. Um, these uh, uh, patients exhibit less metabolic alteration, less immune cells infiltration, higher plasma uh, adiponectin concentration than obese individuals, and in, in some way it uh, resembles what we observed here in the CIF plus R plus uh, uh, context. And what is interesting is also this notion of metabolically LC obese individual is debated. There is uh, the idea that this uh, uh, profile is often temporary. And if this is so, if, if we should apply this to the context of HIV, then it will mean that uh, the adipose tissue is not directly inflammatory, but uh, is not close, not far from getting on the wrong side. Um, and finally, just a, a final conclusion about the contribution of adipose tissue dysfunction to uh, the chronic inflammation associated to HIV. So in our end, uh, it doesn't appear to be mediated by the endocrine activity of uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine. We had no detectable difference in IL-6, and uh, the effect of and the increase in TNF is uh, usually uh, considered as having local effects, so it may not directly uh, contribute to uh, the systemic inflammation. However, uh, adipose tissue is uh, multifaceted and may provide pro-inflammatory signal by other pathways, and uh, fatty acid release obviously uh, should be considered. And the uh, wide exosome production by adipose tissue uh, is uh, now a field of interest. Uh, the contribution to the gut microbiota disease uh, should also be considered. 
so um, I would like uh, to uh, finish by uh, thanking all the members of uh, the lab and the group who uh, uh, helped for this work. Uh, most of the data I presented there were uh, the work of uh, Aude Mousselio, who is a medical doctor in our uh, uh, center. And I also need uh, to thank the uh, primatology center because all this work uh, heavily rely on the access to uh, the non-human primates. And thank you for your attention. Hi, it's, uh, Steve Grinsman. Thank you so much. That was excellent. Um, in addition to effects of antiretroviral therapy, there's an increasing sort of focus on how the virus itself affects adipose tissue. And so, like, there was a really good paper, and I think you cited it in Science Translational Medicine, mm -hmm. about VPR, and yeah. that VPR is measurable even in patients who are in well, very good control in that it can increase uh, glucocorticoid receptor function and decrease PPAR gamma. Yeah. And then we, we did a paper published at ACI that um, DICER is reduced and through a microRNA story that can. So I'm wondering how you contextualize like ART, which is ever shifting and stable sometimes, and then, but the, vi the virus itself, like on adipose function, if, if you. Um, so we, we, we look for uh, the, the viral load in adipose tissue. Um, I can't really show the data because we were below the detection limit. But for what, it, what we can say, it was different between the two groups. And uh, the viral load was lower in the artritis, uh, in the CIF plus artritis group. But I can't do much of this because it's, it was below. So the, anyway, there's not much virus in adipose tissue. Still happy to have it, but uh, to be honest, there's not much. <laughs> and even the, the, the notion of the role of the viral protein is still not clear. Where does it come from? I'm not sure it's just based on the local production. It's probably much more deficient from the site. And uh, it's, it's not easy to evaluate the, the concentration of this viral protein in a deposition. Thank you very much. That was a great talk um, and a very interesting model. Uh, but probably along the same lines, I was thinking that um, <clears throat> one of the disconnects, I, I guess, be between the model and the and our patients is that um, in your model, obviously, they're all vegetarian and they don't have bad habits. <laughs> exactly. <You know? laughs> they don't go out and party and smoke and have you know steaks and cake. Um, so, on the other hand, of course, but you see how perhaps, you know, some other um, dietary or lifestyle factors, I wonder if those play a role, and, I, and perhaps some of these are also testable uh, in your model. So I just wanted to bring up this point because I, I always say that that's very hard to control with, with our patient population. Um, and the other question I had was more whether you were able to distinguish between brown and white adipose tissue, and if you saw any differences there. Um, because I know, for example, T-Rex might be very important in adipose tissue, but they probably work better in brown, but I might, might be misquoting that. But I wonder if, you, if you're looking into the two different types of um, okay. adipose tissue. So obviously, we need to perform the same experiment in obese uh, non-human primate, which is not going to be an easy task, but I tried to convince uh, Roger to do that. So, um, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, th that's one of the limitations. And uh, indeed, we also performed this in cohort of patients. And uh, really, uh, it was a basic study. And we had two groups of controls, uh, one with bad habits, let's say. <laughs> and obviously, uh, there was difference in the inflammatory profile when you compared uh, the, 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 the inflammatory signature in the blood with this bad habit patient compared to the control. So, um, so that was for the first point. For the second point, we were obviously very interested in the T-Rex. And unfortunately, we were unable to reproduce what has been observed in mouse. In the non-human primate models or in human samples, we got a very low percentage of T-Rex, around 2%. So it's nothing that differ from the blood. Uh, compared to the paper from uh, Diane Matisse, who described 40% of T-Rex, it's in males, mice, and uh, between 20 and 30 weeks, I think it's a very short uh, 
frame period where they have this increase in uh, T-Rex, we never saw, see that. And we also check in another uh, mass model, uh, the CBA and uh, valve C. And it was, it was very specific to the B6 mice. So we were unable to confirm these data about T-Rex because we were quite excited about this hypothesis that maybe there was a role of T-Rex. So uh, we, we just discarded this, uh, this hypothesis. And I don't remember, I think there was another question and I lost it. No, okay. <laughs> It was really striking that you saw the inflammatory signal in the Civ plus Art plus uh, animals, and now, of course, in the human primates, there's a lot of interest on the, in the fact that TDF regimens are associated with either weight loss in uh, uninfected uh, people and uh, with uh, much less weight gain than TAF containing regimens. So I'm curious, if, I, I know that primatologists struggled for years for an effective regimen, and they've hit on, on now the combination with TDF, FTC, and dolutegravir. Is TAF available for use in primates? Because that would be in, really interesting to study, to see if you saw a different signal uh, with uh, the TAF formulation of tenofovir instead of TDF. Yes. We try to develop this in a human sample in clinical context uh, with a patient having uh, this uh, type of combination. But again, we are now uh, um, really um, uh, concerned about uh, the other factors that affect adipose tissue biology that are the uh, metabolic uh, history, the infectious history. and. Uh, so far, we are unable to really provide uh, robust data about that. But uh, obviously, uh, uh, this is something that could be tried in the non-human primate model where we could really address this more specifically. Yeah. I'm just curious, are there any data about um, ART without infection in macaques or in humans in the adipose tissue? So in fact, this is the first <laughs> experiment that we like to perform. I think we need to go for just our treatment. We did that for the pharmacocinetic data because to be sure that we have effective uh, art uh, treat, uh, concentration in the tissue and in the blood, there was some preliminary data that were made on non-infected animals. And that was quite surprising. For example, um, for 15 days of treatment, there was massive change in the composition of adipose tissue. and. Uh, there was a massive impact on the, the uh, adipose stem cells. So the progenitors were highly affected by these. But we need to go for a longer period to really address that. Do you think it could be because of endogenous retroviruses, which are you know, increased in stem-like cells? Who's yeah, I, that, that might be really interesting. Could, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. OK. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you.